I want to thank you all for coming out. This is a Green Party event. It's the Downtown Corporate Welfare Walk. And uh, well, I, I, I have handed out a sheet which is about the tax breaks and only the tax breaks. There's much more to talk about. But I want to start out with what taxes are about. Because taxes fund the things we want. And I think that we're not here at the library accidentally. We're here because this is one of the things that provides safe places for kids, babysitting, computer access, and books. Okay? So all these are things that at one point were such considered such an important value that both the county pays almost six million dollars a year to support our library systems and a sharing system on the property on the uh, sales taxes but the state regulated the amount of your property taxes have to go to libraries as a result we collect almost 16 million dollars for library every year and this year we are spending 11 million of that on libraries and li th this Tax breaks are one of the things that comes directly from services like libraries, which it's hard to say we don't need. You know, this is an almost essential service that government needs to provide, and they even collect money for it and don't even spend it all because they'd rather spend it on all these other things. And the uh, uh, normally when they do this, what their government does is choose winners and losers. And Frequently, if we look at up the street a little bit, we are looking at the Downtown Convention Center. The beautiful silver and black building is the Downtown Convention Center. It was built in 1980, and it has successfully done its job of attracting people downtown for conventions. It does it so well that every year we only have to pay $1.5 million to subsidize it. <laughs> And when it was built, it was not subsidized for its first six years, and it turned a profit, and the city took it over because they felt that they could then collect that money. And at the time, when it was, it was even paying a rental fee to the city, the company that was running it paid a rental fee, and now, at the moment, it pays no taxes, it pays, and, and, well, that's not quite true. If you look at your sheet, it's on there, and it says it paid some, something like $40,000. What this is, is there's a, their taxes are done in two sections. One is called easements, and everyone pays easements. And when you see ridiculously no numbers on the sheet, that's because they're paying the easements, which are for sidewalk repair, snow plowing, things like that. So if it, does, if it pays this ridiculous money, even the library pays that. The convention center pays it, and yet we still have to give it $1.5 million every year. And sure, it supports hotels near it, and there are three hotels near there. There is the Radisson and the Hyatt, which both pay full taxes, which is good. They pay even pay a special tax on room rental. It's a good deal for us. But next to it, next to the Hyatt, is a new hotel called Hilton Garden Inns, number 13 on your list. And Hilton Garden Inns has, because it's a hardship to come here, they are getting 20 years tax-free, basically, oh to God. compete against two hotels that pay full taxes and will make less profit, and so are now losers in this situation. Because all they've done, you want to get by? All the city has done with their taxing plan is choose a winner and choose a loser. And frequently, things like the libraries always end up being the losers. So, I'd like to head on down the street some. You have they're listed as a not-for-profit. But they're owned by a company called, they're owned by a company called Lifetime Healthcare. A for-profit company. You'll figure it out, okay? They turn a profit. Their CEO made their CEO made over eight million dollars last year, and yet somehow they couldn't manage to pay their taxes and had to because they're a not-for-profit. They're getting this uh, this beautiful uh, uh, this, their number seven. This beautiful twenty-six million dollar building is getting over. 1.1 million dollars in tax breaks 
which, if they paid their taxes, <laughs> means their CEO would only make seven million. <laughs> and there are all sorts of games that are played with not-for-profits. And frequently, and I know some people are gonna say, I love the little theater, because I love the little theater. The little theater is a not-for-profit. But it's a not-for-profit because by not paying taxes and by being a not-for-profit, they can increase the salaries of the people running it because it didn't make quite enough money for them and it's done as a game to increase salaries. Yeah, they all go together and what this is is they do a game in which they do a game in which you create a not-for-profit solely so you can get out of certain expenses which you can then use for salary enhancements and Mike again this is an insurance company since when did an insurance company not for profit what public good is an insurance company providing and yet it allows them to get out of a million dollars in taxes which Rochester just giving Rochester a million dollar a million dollars could be called public good but yet that is not how this works. And there are a lot of these not-for-profits solely created yes, I am for totally the purpose of increasing profit. If you want to see how bad non-for-profits are, go to the Northeast. Now they destroy let's, communities. Let's turn our direction this way where we see the beautiful Capron sign. This is the Capron Street Loft Apartment Building. This could be this, this building, although I can't prove it because I didn't look at every, I did not look at every single apartment in the city, but there is a $2.1 million apartment in there, which I believe is the most expensive apartment in the whole city. But is that, has anybody bought it? Yes, it is owned. The condo there is owned. Now, Capron Street total taxes is $5,000. And it has a $2 million apartment. And it pays $5,000. It was built with public money. Um, it was a $4.5 million project. It received $1.1 million of public funding. So a quarter of it was paid for with your taxes. And a lot of these building projects that happen, they actually do a thing in which they get low income tax credits from the federal government which they then sell to rich people to, so that they can, and they sell for less than half the value of the credit, so rich people can buy like a million dollars of tax credits for half a million dollars and lower their tax rate even more. And this is one of the ways many of these get funded. Capron Street um, what got this deal and was rental for a while and then sold them off is tax shelters to incredibly wealthy people who bought properties in their loft apartments to go from about one, I think the cheapest is 154000 to $2.1 million is properties. And if you want to know the real reason in which a homeless village was not allowed to stay across the street, look at the view they have. They're staring right at where Sanctuary Village was. Who would? But someone did, and Rochester is filled with these housing projects, downtown in particular, which, uh, uh, which have been built with public money and yet pay no real taxes, only the easements on the property, allowing the wealthiest people, and imagine if you own even a $300,000 apartment, you're not doing that badly in life. You don't need to avoid on that property your taxes should be your taxes on that property should be a very reasonable six, uh, about seven thousand dollars you don't need that money the city needs that money things like libraries recreation all which have been cut by the way um, that's what these taxes are needed for and yet we're giving them to rich people and if the uh, the sheet that you're holding is littered with these buildings, whether they're the Warner lofts or whether they're um, uh, uh, we, uh, whether they're the Academy Building or whatnot, Rochester is littered with these large uh, renovation projects, which have created uh, very expensive upscale living arrangements with no tax benefit for the city at all.
want to attack this at a different angle. This is a $50 million building that was built. Don't forget the parking garage. And the parking garage <laughs> threw in another $19 million. The building is gorgeous. I love it. But it was it bought the land for to build it. The land was given to them for one dollar. Then the land was worth three some million dollars. They received they received three million dollars from the city and at least three million from the state. So this is a project that has received substantial public money to build. And in the deal with ESL, ESL wanted to build a headquarters, had money to build a headquarters, didn't even threaten to build it elsewhere, and Rochester, for fear that the company might not build it where the company said they wanted to, stepped forward and said, whoa, we haven't given you anything yet. Let us find some good stuff to give you. And one of the problems I'm always asked is, well, they say, if we don't do this, they won't build. And then we'll just have this dead, vacant area. And my answer is, we don't know that. And ESL is a great example. They had picked the property and inquired about purchasing it when they were told that, no, we'll give it to you for a dollar. It's quite possible that they would have paid money and would have built it all their own and by giving them, we could have perhaps gotten a deal in which they would have paid something on the taxes, which we're getting at the moment, nothing. And what we do, and this is a great thing, we gave, we gave them a pile of stuff, knowing we would get this building. The ESL is a great example of a project that the city interfered with and prevented us from getting a better deal when they could have negotiated a better deal. And this is another one of those problems we have is that the minute anyone wants to build, the city races there to try to offer them everything they can find instead of finding out what we have to give them, what it would take to make it happen. We're always offering them in advance before and ESL had made a decision and announced in one of their newsletters to their members they were going to do this before the city even heard about it <coughs> and got involved. ESL had all, it, it, the city's first notice was when ESL asked to buy the property. They got and free money. Bought it for a dollar. They got yeah. free money. And, and this is another one of our many. The, uh, 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 Who sold it to him? Which mayor was it? Oh, uh, that was Bob Duffy. Bob Duffy? Oh, yeah. a lot of these started. So, we're going to move up to the Tower District. We are standing at the entrance to the Tower District area. In case you're unaware, the Xerox Tower, the Legacy Tower, Green Crossing is at the corner, and the big white one you can't see behind it is the Chase Tower. These are four of Rochester's bigger towers. Now, this is really an interesting section. Just three, two, ju just three years ago, the Xerox Tower, the only one that could not be said in distress, it had a tenant that uses the entire building, and Xerox, for various reasons, decided they'd rather rent than own. So they wanted to sell the building, but it had been on it had been on the market since 2007 and they had made a statement that they're going to stick to their guns for market value. If they don't sell it, they don't sell it. It's not a big deal. Okay. The Xerox Tower finally sold to Morgan and Buckingham, which is Larry Glazer and, and uh, Bob Morgan. And they bought that property for $39 million. It comes to, it's a huge building, almost half a million square feet of space. And it, com it comes to about $93 per square foot is the price. Now this is going to be important when we get back to it. This building, despite selling three years ago, is still assessed at $13 million. Now anyone who works in real estate, owns real estate, or has owned real estate will know 
that when you buy a property, they very rapidly tell you that if its price was more than their assessed price, it's going up to that. It always goes up to that. This building has no deal on record, no Comida deal, nothing. And yet, it's still frozen at its construction cost from 1968 of $39 million. Not $13 million. It's still bang the same price it did before some of you were born. And, and oddly, Clinton Crossing, which is a gorgeous building in the shortest of all the ones we're going to talk about, pays the most taxes. It not nearly as nice as this building, the Bausch and Lomb building, but yet somehow manages to pay $1.1 million, which is the most for any building in the downtown area. Now remember when I talked about how with the hotels, there's one that doesn't pay taxes and one that does, what ends up happening is the ones that don't pay taxes can charge a little less for rent, draw tenants over. The one that had been paying full taxes now complains that they're paying too much. Well, just a little while ago, this was the building that paid the most taxes. When it was the Bausch and Lomb building before Bausch and Lomb was sold, this building was assessed at, at was assessed at $27 million and paid almost $1.2 million in taxes, just beating out Clinton Crossing. Bausch and Lomb had claimed that it was the tax rate that they were paying that was that was crushing them and made them have to get rid of the building. And part of the sale, the new owners of Bausch and Lomb insisted that they need to divest of these properties. And so they would be what we would call in the real estate market a distressed seller. And when a distressed seller sells a property, its property value is not assumed to be full market value. This sold for $15 million to a group that I probably have never heard of, Morgan and uh, uh, Glazer, Glazer again. AKA and, Buckingham Properties. Yeah. Yeah, they bought this building for $15 million at a distressed price, which is still, which is still for, uh, uh, which is still $43 per square foot. Now, I bring this up because you would think that two similar buildings in the same area with similar amenities, both having a parking garage, both, uh, 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 you would think that they would have similar assessment per square foot. And you could make a very solid argument that somewhere between the legacy buildings, 70, uh, the legacy buildings, $43 a square foot, and the Xerox towers, 93, you might settle on a reasonable amount like 84 per square feet, which Clinton Crossing is bad. Remember, the smallest of all the buildings. And yet, they still have given a deal to this building so that it's paying $36,000 per taxes. Despite the fact that it was a distressed seller and this would never exist on your street. If someone bought on your street and they paid, if they bought on your street and they paid like $10,000 more than the value that it's assessed for, not only would their property go up, but yours would too, because they would try to reassess it. So when this sold for $39 million, every tower in the area they should have looked at and said, gosh, we should reassess these up to a reasonable value. And the Chase Tower, which you don't see, which was bought by Galena Company, uh, which is actually the maiden name of Elaine Spa, so, Paul's family bought it. So look for tax breaks in the near future for this building. Um, that building is assessed at the moment at $11 per square foot. Wow. Okay? What's the Chase building you said? Uh, the, that is the Chase Tower. It is on your sheet at... Uh, and a lot of people think if you were asked what's the worst project the city has ever done, people are going to say the fast ferry. It comes right to your mind. The fast ferry was terrible and it cost the city almost $40 million. And it was a disaster. Well, what we're looking at, what we're looking at is what $170 million of public money has gotten us. 
Wow. wow. You're beautiful. That includes state money too, right? <laughs> yes. The city, because the city the only the put, right? the city only put eighty-six million dollars into this. Eighty-six million dollars got us to here. Wow. Now, a story building. they had said that this was this was sold to us because it would be easy to market this if we made it shovel ready, so that people could just come and put buildings on it. And so far, a number of projects have been suggested, from movie theaters to colleges, and the city has, for various reasons, rejected every single one of them. Because in most cases, there's, they don't have enough money. Okay, none of these projects, they want us to build them entirely to put them here. <laughs> and eventually, even the city knows we've spent enough. And this project has really forced us to build a new bus terminal. When the building itself, even when we got it, you could drive buses through it so that it would have supported a bus terminal already without having to spend an additional 30 million dollars to build one 55 thank you 55 million right we could have just kept this yeah. instead yeah. of building the new bus terminal it doesn't fit all the buses and this would have yeah. fit all the buses and a couple more buses and a public market because it's inside space was four times the public market we have we could have had an indoor public market and bus terminal in the same building. Anyways, I digress. Well, we were first promised the deal happened. They were able to get the state money to match to tear it down because Paytech said they'd build a 40-story tower, yeah, which is right. what you see behind me, <laughs> a 40-story tower. In the process of this, Paytech got bought by Windstream, and to his credit, Chuck Schumer, threatened to block the whole deal unless they agreed to move some, unless the new company, Windstream, agreed to move at least 200 employees downtown. So, Windstream agreed to this and the city had the right to specify any building that might have some space and look around you. Every building but the Xerox tower that you see has space. <laughs> Every single one, <laughs> okay, could have put these 200 employees in it. The only, oh, that's not true. Clinton Clin Crossings doesn't have enough open space. I'm sorry. It pays full taxes. It's full. <laughs> but everything you see has vacant spaces. They could have done it. The legacy building, when it was Bausch and Lam building, Bausch and Lam would have kept it if we made those employees move into there. Oh, my God. Instead, we contracted Pike Construction, and we wanted Pike to build this building that we see before us. Pike agreed. Now, some people may argue with me about what I consider the public subsidy to that building. I'm counting this lovely square we're standing on, which was built by the city of Rochester. As a, my mind as public assistance to the Windstream building. The parking garage underneath was built and re was renovated after it was damaged by the construction and reconstructed by the city at a cost of $3.5 million. A tunnel connection was redone at a cost of $2 million. I can go on. <laughs> All these things push, our, the cost of building this building was $18.9 million. When you total all the things like the streets, which would, didn't need to be put in until we had a building that was coming here. All, the landscaping that's been done, all of that was done for this building at public expense. The utilities were all redone for this building at public expense. The city spent, the public money is more than $20 million for Pike to build an $18 million building, of which $11 million come from the state in the city, $6 million from the city, $5 million from the state to build an $18 million building, which Pike, not Windstream, received tax breaks for, and Pike's deal states <laughs> that they will get $24 per square foot per rent per year from Windstream for 15 years. And anyone who owns property who rents would love that deal. Okay? And they have a guaranteed tenant 
who will pay them whether they use the space or not for 15 years at above market rate in the downtown area and they are not paying taxes <laughs> when they funded less than half the building and they will not pay taxes for 20 years the tower the midtown tower now i want to compare this many of you are old enough to remember when the hyatt building was girders in the air and the Hyatt building, for those who don't know, Hyatt, it, Hyatt had walked away from the project. They were half done and they were finished. <coughs> it was going nowhere. It was too expensive to tear down. It, to tear down. it was an eyesore. And what happened was a group of people in Rochester, including the Wegmans Corporation and, uh, uh, and Wilma Wright, and a bunch of other places agreed to finish that building. And they finished it and they got a tenant in and that tenant was the Hyatt, who wanted to be there anyways, but didn't want to build the building. And they came up with a purchase agreement which paid off and as part of that, Hyatt pays full taxes. Let us compare it to the vacant eyesore <laughs> that this building is. When this building was, when, when they tore down Midtown, they agreed to keep the tower and they gutted it. There were no windows, there was nothing on the inside, and it sat that way for five years. Because it was an eyesore, something needed to be done. Now, opposed to the Hyatt, where people got together, put their own money into it, and got a return, and the city got full taxes, the city got involved, and instead gave this building away for, and they got a good deal. They were able to negotiate the price up from the $1 that ESL got their property for to $2. <laughs> to Morgan, and you're not, the same, the same, the same grift to suspects, Buckingham Properties and Morgan, and uh, 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 Morgan Management. So Bob Morgan and Larry Glazer, with the great Glazer vision of buying low, getting the government to pay for it, and selling high, which is his vision, and brilliant, by the way, you can make a lot of money buying low, selling high, and making the government fund everything in between. Wow. And they gave this for $2 to them, despite a solid public deal offer of $100,000 for that building. With money in that room that night to pay them. This building, yeah. I mean, they had the $2 in their pocket, ready no, to go? $100,000. Uh, we, we made a $100,000 offer for that building. Oh, oh, I remember that. Yeah, and they turned that down. They turned it down. This building, this building, this, they financed the $2. This building, this building, $2 not only bought this building, it bought a 20 year lease on a parking lot next to it. It bought a hundred and some slots in the parking garage underneath it. Uh, also, at a ridiculously low cost, <laughs> it bought the uh, the glass building across the street, which uh, leads down to. That was an extra dollar. That oh, that's right. That, that was, was an extra. extra I'm sorry, Lisa's oh, right. That did cost a, a whole extra dollar, price. and 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 it came with and it came with a box filled with money. <laughs> Treasure hunt? You're kidding. This, right? they I'm not. No. They paid three dollars and they got a box. They got they paid three dollars for twelve point seven million dollars. The city gave them six point seven million dollars cash. 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 After they got and the state threw in an additional six million dollars to, to convince you to pay three dollars for that building. With that's why I wanted the deal. With for my hundred thousand dollars, I get twelve million. That was a good deal, right? <laughs> that's why that, I wanted. That, that was cash, not like some tax breaks. That or was cash. cash. Not cash. No. That was oh. cash. Here's three dollars. Thank you. I'll take twelve point seven. Right. By the that's way. The by the way, this is as bad as it sounds. <laughs> and and they agreed to turn this into apartments, high-end apartments. And to rent them at market rate, and for that, for the service of making rich people housing, they have been given a 30-year tax abatement on the property, which 30. 30. 
Well, Why are you surprised? Twenty is not nearly enough. They paid three dollars. Right. Two not dollars. one, not two, but three dollars. Now, this remember that this comes with to get to the point that they get to have this building in twelve million dollars. To get to that point, the city had spent a hundred, uh, had spent eighty-six million dollars to get to the point that they could pay six more. To, 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 give, to, give, to turn this into something. And there are still six acres of vacant land here available that nobody wants. They can't give away the remaining six acres. There are no, there are no uh, buyers for more free land downtown. Now, the, the, uh, uh, now. Does anyone have three bucks? That's the real question. Think about that. This was done to create something that would be easy for developers, and no developer would take it, knowing that they could even get millions of dollars from the city to build whatever they want and won't pay taxes. No one will still take it. This is the state we are built ourselves a city in, and this goes at my favorite phrase, this is why we cannot afford nice things, because we are buying poverty.